Good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to another board meeting, board session. I'm going to call this meeting to order. This meet, meeting of the Denville Township Board of Education is being held in accordance with the Open Public Meetings Act. Notice of this meeting was provided to the Daily Record and or the Star Ledger of Morris County, has been delivered to the Township Clerk, and has been posted on the bulletin board of the Board of Education Office and at each of the school buildings in the district. Roll call, please. Dr. Moore? Here. Mrs. Seidelis? Here. Dr. Aruna de Tassin? Uh, then you stated he will not be here tonight. Thank you. Mr. Cass? Here. Mr. Anderson? Here. Mr. Capello? Here. Mr. Kim? Here. Uh, there was no need for an executive session, so uh, we'll skip that part. Now, we're going to rise for the Pledge of Allegiance, but uh, to honor and remember those who've lost their lives at Appalachia High School in Georgia, we'll follow the Pledge of Allegiance with a moment of silence. So, all rise. Thank you for that. Okay, moving along with the agenda, so, uh, special presentations next week. It looks like we'll be reviewing the district and board goals. October 7th, I'm sorry, next meeting, not next week. Next meeting on October 7th will be the HIB self grading presentation. And October 28th will be Dr. Cullis. Dr. Cole is it, uh, will be presenting the NJSLA test results from 23-24 school year. Okay, and uh, superintendent comments, Dr. Forte, if you will. Thank you. Um, I wanted to say that we had a nice opening. I sent you all a picture of me with the Lakeview Lion, and we posted some pictures on Facebook and um, Twitter. It was um, a very nice opening, smooth, and um, everybody seemed happy when we walked around. So. I was, I was very pleased to see what was going on. Um, QSAC update. On October 28th, we will have to approve the, the uh, DPR, which is the District Performance Report, is part of QSAC procedure. And QSAC is the monitoring that we, un that we go um, through every three years with the state of New Jersey. And um, because it's due on a, November 15th, it has to be board approved prior to submitting. So we will have it ready for approval on October 28th. On January 15th, 2025, the Morris County Executive School Superintendent and her team will visit our full CUSAC team. And Mr. Kim is our Board of Education representative for CUSAC. So our two big dates are um, the 28th of October for approval. So that means we're working on all those all those parts of QSAC right now. And those of you that have seen it, there's um, a lot of different pieces to it. So we're gathering all our information now. And then uh, we will have it on the agenda for the 28th of October. And then again, our site visit is January 15th. Um, this is just information. There's not, other than Mr. Kim, there's no other, there's nothing else you need to do on the 15th. This is a snapshot of our enrollment on September 5th. I emailed it to you, but just wanted to make sure that everybody was aware of what's going on with this. Um, we do have a total of 1,749 students. Our Dr. Grip projection was 1,743. Um, Lakeview's enrollment is 697. Riverview is 465. And Valley View is 574. Again, this is on September 5th. Dr. Grip's projection with the new housing was 1810. That was if all new housing were, was built and occupied. Um, students in the Mildred Gill Lane, which is the one that where the Alexis Diner is, as of September 5th, we have six students. 
and the development next to Mars Knowles, the Toll Brothers. We have six students there as well. The Essling Lake Apartments that were built a few years ago, we have 15 students. And just an update on what else is going on. The Route 10 project has started the groundwork. The Redmond Press has started their framing, actually on the second floor. So they're, they're moving along. And the uh, one that's going to be on Thermont, which is the one near nearest the Denville train station, not the other train station, the Denville one, is getting close because I did receive an email from their engineer asking for information about the bus stop for that location. So I'm, I'm assuming that this project is going to be moving as well. I took a ride over there the other day just to take a look at it. Um, I guess if they could build in that spot on Route 10, they could build anywhere because that's pretty steep too. Um, this is probably a little less steep than that, but it's uh, it's it's a, it's in a it's in an odd spot because you have to go over the bridge and the roads over there don't look like they were meant for this type of traffic. If you ever take a look at it, I'm not sure of the answer of whether or not there's going to be a road that's that's open from opposite of the train of the train station all the way down to like the Votech. I don't know if that's going to be open or not. I know it's there, but I'm not sure if it's going to be open. But I do know they're planning on closing the railroad crossing closest to the Votech, like not allow passing through there anymore. I went I went to a meeting on that. That was what they said. But the, again, it's NJ Transit. It, it, I don't know how long it'll take for it to get done. I just wanted to give you a heads up of what's going on and some of the things that are happening around town. And um, I think the biggest part for me, my takeaway, this is just me, is that in theory and prediction and paper, you look at it and you're like, eh, it's all right. But then when you actually see it being built and you drive down there and you see you know, how, how big it actually is, all these different developments that are going up, it starts to make you think a little bit. Um, so that was my takeaway from it for now. I will keep you updated as much as I can on this. And um, that's the comments for the superintendent today. Thank you, Dr. Forte. Um, proceeding to uh, Assistant Superintendent comments, Dr. Colas, if you will. Sure, just following up on the discussion we had last meeting about composting, I did meet with our green team and they let me know that they have been meeting with the town and have gone on several trainings recently about uh, a composting project that the town is, is looking into at the recycling center. So we are attending those meetings and as it moves forward, we will look into our possible participation. It's with a third, a third company that is involved in picking up the compost. So we will keep you updated and we will be looking into how we can be involved in that project as it moves forward. Our sixth grade study skills program will be starting on September 23rd at Valley View. Um, NJSLA results will be arriving mid-September, so in the next week or so, and they will be uploaded into Genesis instead of being mailed home this year. And notification will be made when the NJSLA reports are available for viewing. This concludes Assistant Superintendent's report. Thank you, Dr. Collis. Business Administrator comments. Uh, Ms. Gorowski, do you have any comments? I do. One, uh, the first week of the National School Lunch Program went really well last week. We're still making minor adjustments as needed. And today, the Department of Health issued the sanitation certificate. So we are in a good start and we'll be moving forward. Great. Thank you. All right, moving on. Uh, we will now open it up for public discussion. Uh, it is 7.39, and if there are any questions or comments, please feel free to step up to the mic and state your name and address, and uh, please proceed. Hello, my name is Dave Luer, 9 Wildwood Terrace. I, uh, I actually came this evening with a question that wasn't directly related to the agenda, but having reviewed the agenda, I do have a couple of questions. Uh, the first one is about uh, Section 4A personnel items 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. What is the DALA program? 
uh, cause I, I, I haven't been paying attention as much as I should have the last two and a half years. That stands for the Denville Accelerated Learning Academy, and it's a general education summer program that we run alongside our extended school year, but it's open to our general education students. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, under policy revisions, uh, it looks, it appears as if the board wants to abolish the remote public board meetings during declared emergency. Uh, <clears throat> is, is that really a good idea. It, I mean, worst comes to worst and we have to do it again. Wouldn't it be better to have it on the books or are we concerned that it would be abused in some way? It's actually covered in a different policy. That's, that's really the only reason. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, the last thing I wanted to, uh, I wanted to talk about, or at least bring to your attention, uh, the, I am of the opinion that the Denver school district needs to uh, should be paying more attention to what's going on in the districts that it sends students to. Uh, last, this past graduation, uh, the Valley View graduation and the uh, Morris Knowles graduation, uh, sorry, not the Morris Knowles graduation, the uh, uh, Votech graduation happened at almost the same time. They were overlapped by like an hour or so. And the back to school night for Valley View and the vote and the Votech are actually happening on the same night. Valley View starts, I think, a half an hour after the Votech starts. There is significant overlap between the students be in families. Uh, my family, for one, has a student at Valley View and a student at Votech. And fortunately, my wife works literally across the street, but she can't drive right now, so she's going to have to walk across the street, and I'm going to have to go to the Valley View one. Uh, it seems that with the dates that are available, there should be some way to uh, cor that not correspond. Sorry, to uh, just to talk to the various districts and make sure that all of the various dates do not happen at the same time. Thank, Thank you. you. So we do look into the dates with Mars Hills Regional. So there's five districts that all have to kind of work together. So that's that's a challenge. Um, I could definitely consider a possibility of back to school night. Graduation has other issues like our school calendar. What there's a couple other graduations that happen at Mars Knowles, and we also have to. We don't like to have the graduation too met too much earlier than the end, and we definitely don't want to have it after the end. So um, the graduation is a little bit more of a challenge, but the back to school night is something that we could look into for next year. I would appreciate that. Thank you. Seeing no one else in the chambers and no one online, we're going to close public comments at 7.43 p.m. Moving on to old business, no action to be taken. Um, Ms. Adelis, if you will. Uh, sure. Um, at the next meeting, myself or someone else will move these items for approval. Um, we are looking at the July and August 2024 Treasurer of School Monies reports, the Board Secretary reports, Education reports, and the minutes for August 19th, 2024 work session and executive session meetings. Any questions or comments? Okay, moving on the agenda, new business action to be taken. Uh, Mr. Capella, can you uh, walk us through the personnel section, please? I would be happy to. If there are no objections under personnel, I would like to move items 1 through 11, uh, starting with item 1, which are uh, resignations and uh, changes to pay. Uh, sections or numbers 2 through 6, are uh, related to the DALA program, approved uh, attached staff to work uh, for that program. Uh, number seven, uh, we're uh, approving a leave of absence for an employee. I'll call your attention to number eight. There is a correction on that item uh, where it says, uh, the board hereby approves employee, the number, the number should be D0001077. Uh, and then continuing down, that carries through to where it says, be, be it further resolved uh, for employee number, and again, D0001077. 
Uh, item nine are approving the uh, mentor-mentee relationships for 24-25 with the appropriate uh, stipends paid by the mentees, uh, and then will be reimbursed by the district. Um, also here, I want to call out uh, line item G uh, for uh, Maria Taglienti. The mentor, instead of being Tia Zeleni, would be Deborah Jake, uh, Jacobus. Um, item 10, uh, the board approving the reimbursement for mentor fees uh, that were previously paid by the mentees. And finally, uh, we are approving uh, one substitute, um, Sherry Danzi, for the 24-25 school year. I'll second. Thank you very much. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Dr. Moore? Yes. Mrs. Seidelis? Yes. Dr. Aruna Jatassan? I'm so sorry. Mr. Cass? Yes. Mr. Anderson? Yes. Mr. Capello? Yes. Mr. Kim? Yes. Uh, section B, Finance. Mr. Anderson, can you walk us through that, please? Sure, if there are no objections under Section B, Finance, I'd like to move number one, which is the board approve the attached 2024-2025 back to school evaluations contract with St. Clair Behavioral Health at the rate of $250 for each back to school evaluation performed by St. Clair's to the students referred by the school district and or schools. I'll second. I'll Thank you. Sorry, Don. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Dr. Moore? Yes. Mrs. Adelis? Yes. Mr. Cass? Yes. Mr. Anderson? Yes. Mr. Capello? Yes. Mr. Kim? Yes. Mr. Cass, uh, could you walk us through operations, please? Sure will. Under building and grounds, item 1.1 is for the board to approve the attached design change notice 002 from EI Associates in connection with the sidewalk project in the amount of $2,805. 1.2 is for the board to approve to authorize EI Associates to submit a major amendment to the LRFP in accordance with PL 2007C.137. Each school district must amend its long range facilities plan at least once every five years, which is referred to as a major amendment. In addition, district's LRFP must be current and consistent with school facilities project applications. Can I have a second, please? I'll second. All right, thank you very much. Questions or comments? Uh, did, did we receive a copy of that major uh, amendment, or was that discussed in committee? The long-range facilities plans uh, five-year is due September 23rd. We have not filed for the amendment yet. Every five years, we have to update a, my, a major amendment. So uh, we would not have the report until it's approved by the Department of Education. It has to be approved by the board first to let us do it. You have to, you're approving us to do it. The submission of the application. To submit your, so we're approving just the submission to the state. Correct. And you know what we have to do, we have to update it because we're going to have to, we're looking at what we're going to do with the facility at 46 Nicole Drive with the buildings on there. So, so all this has to be done. But, so I, I think maybe I'm getting to maybe what James was. So, but we're not reviewing it before we submit it. I mean, I say we, the board, as in the board, that that's the part I'm confused about. The major amendment is really updating what we currently have. And every time we have a change, could be a project or the purchase of the 46th Nicole Drive, we do a minor amendment just to include the change. This, every five years, we have to approve. If there's, even if there's no changes, we still need to do a new application and board approve it. So you guys already approved all the things that are in it. This is just approving it like we have to, it's a thing for every five years. And we can present a report once we submit the application. Any other questions or comments from the rest of the board? Roll call, please. Dr. Moore? Yes. Mrs. Adelis? Yes. 
Mr. Cass? Yes. Mr. Anderson? Yes. Mr. Capello? Yes. Mr. Kim? Yes. Okay, uh, the next section of the agenda is new business, no action to be taken. So Mr. Capello, if you could walk us through the personnel section again. Uh, absolutely, uh, if there are no objections, at the next meeting, uh, we will be reviewing and voting on uh, items one and uh, two. Items one would include um, position staff, uh, school, uh, staff for after school enrichment program for the remainder of the 24-25 school year. Uh, and any additional items, uh, and also uh, substitutes, which right now has no items in it. Thank you very much. Any questions or comments? Okay, on uh, the next section, Dr. Moore, can you walk us through the instruction and portal program? Uh, sure. Uh, either myself or someone else will move for approval the following resolutions under instruction and program under item number one. Uh, workshop and expenses. There are two teachers for the NJIDA 39th Annual Fall Conference in Somerset, New Jersey. And under item number two, uh, the board will approve the Childhood Victories, Inc. to provide uh, body safety education per Aaron's law. Questions or comments here? Uh, yeah, I just wanted to uh, highlight the uh, item number two. It was, uh, you know, in response to Aaron's law, and Dr. Cullis spent some time in committee um, telling us uh, how uh, the process went in terms of her selection of the uh, childhood victories and that the uh, language would be um, age appropriate and um, that the the speaker uh, presenting is, is, is pro-parent. There's not... Uh, and it just just seems to me that this is a uh, one of those opportunities that the more we can communicate um, the the details to the community, the the better we are in allaying concerns and preventing the rumor mills. And you know, for the uh, um, the PTA liaisons, I think it would probably be a good idea to to kind of present there as well, just giving everyone a heads up, and there will be an opportunity for parents to see. Um, what's going to be presented uh, before it is. And I think there's also an opportunity for parents to opt out. And I don't know if Dr. Collis wanted to say anything more about it. I don't know if I did it justice or not. You did uh, well. So I just want to let the parents know it's November 19th. We will be having, a vir it will be virtual, but that presentation will be made to um, all parents and families. So they'll be able to watch that at seven o'clock at home. And the staff will be receiving the information on October 14th. And I think it's a great suggestion to go to the PTAs uh, and talk to them as well. Thank you. I look forward to that, actually. So uh, yeah, if, uh, once the details are available, please let us know. Mr. Kim, can I make a friendly amendment uh, on the billings and grounds, please? On 101, under the... EI Associates change order. It should be toilet, not sidewalk project. Oh, I see. So we're going back to buildings and grounds? Correct. Okay. Um, so Mr. Kess, uh, do you understand the change that Ms. Gorowski is presenting to us? This change order should have been toilet project, not sidewalk project. Okay, by me. And... Um, yeah, Mr. Capello, were you the one who second? Yeah. Yes. It's unclear. One point one second line. Microphone. Uh, one oh one one point one second line in connection with the toilet project in the amount of two thousand eight hundred and five dollars. That is correct. Okay, that's fine with me. Thank you. Okay, and uh, so we'll have to have a new roll call. Is that correct, Ms. Gorowski? Dr. Moore. Yes. Mrs. Adelis? Yes. Mr. Cass? Yes. Mr. Anderson? Yes. Mr. Capello? Yes. Mr. Kemp? Yes. Thank you. Okay, so uh, under instruction and program, were there any further questions or comments before we moved on to policy and revisions? Okay, Mrs. Zadellis, could you walk us through policy revisions, please? Happy to. Uh, at the next meeting, myself or someone else will move the following resolutions under policy revisions to adoption. 
So this is our second reading of these policies. Um, and as stated by uh, our member here, Dave, uh, the remote public board meetings during declared emergency is an abolished, but it is incorporated into other regulations. And if you can, if you have any questions, I guess they're all within uh, the agenda for review. Any questions or comments? Okay, moving on to finance, Mr. Anderson. Sure, at the next meeting, myself or someone else will move under D finance. Uh, there is, uh, there'll be our checklist uh, that we will get uh, prior to the meeting, as well as uh, the board will be asked to approve donation of 15 boxes of school supplies from the Denville Township Social Services. Uh, item number three is for the board to approve the attached food service biosecurity management plan. Uh, item number four is for the board to approve the 24-25 enrichment programs at Lakeview and Riverview uh, as the uh, cost listed in the agenda. Board uh, Item number five is for the board to approve uh, to donate a projector uh, to the Denville Blue Angels football organization, uh, which is no longer needed for the district. Item number six is for the board to approve the following individuals to attend the New Jersey School Board Workshop and Exposition in Atlantic City on October 21st to the 24th at a group reservation rate of $2,100. Additional cost per person uh, is as follows. Hotel, $107 per night. Meals and incidentals, $44.25 first and last day. $59 for the full uh, day plus mileage reimbursement expense. And the individuals are Dr. Stephen Forte, Mrs. Damaris Gorowski, Mr. James Kim, Mr. Michael Anderson, and Dr. Clifford Moore. And that's all for finance. Great, thank you very much. Questions or comments? Uh, Mrs. Growski, can you tell us a little bit more about item number three, the food service biosecurity management plan? As part of the National School Lunch Program, we have to approve uh, several policies. One of them is policy uh, 8500, and which in that policy policy also explained about the uh, bio, the manual for the bio, um, food chain and it's basically a manual explaining who's in charge, who's the coordinator, uh, who's doing what and basically all the protocols that we have to follow. Thank you. If there was ever some kind of an emergency, it's like the plan in place to how to deal with it. The, this came out a few years ago, everybody has to do it. Stay, if you have the launch program, it might be the only spot in our policy that we use the word biosecurity. It's very exciting. Um, on, on number four, the enrichment program. Uh, it says $16 to the Board of Education from uh, each registration. So I'm a little confused about the wording about that. Do so, I get $16 for doing nothing? <laughs> so the, um, the, the, this is what we, so let me back up a little bit. When I first got here, we had a program of enrichment where teachers that ran the enrichment directly paid, were directly paid by parents. We realized that's not a good practice. So we put this thing in place where we now have, um, they, they get a good, they get $52 per student though, registered. It's, it's a pretty good deal. Um, but the board has to have some of the money on that because they're using our facility our uh, insurance, everything of ours. And then not only that, um, when, a, when a student needs an aide or a student needs a nurse to stay after, we need those, we need that fun, those funds to try to stay neutral. We, we, like during the budget process, I explained to you, everybody, and we all decided to put about 10,000 in the budget to defray some of the costs because we usually run a little bit of a deficit. So this $16 is helping to keep that deficit to as close to zero as possible. Also cover the payroll taxes. Payroll taxes? Correct. Understood, thank you. And $16 for the district to manage the overhead, okay. Any other questions or comments? Okay, moving on to operations, Mr. Cass, if you will. At the next meeting, I'm going to ask the board to approve two items. 2.1 is to approve the attached quote from Clean Earth to dispose of all chemicals 
in the amount of $1,930.37 paid from maintenance reserve. Item 2.2 is to approve the attached quote from C.J. Vanderbeck and Son Incorporated to repair all three boilers at Riverview in the amount of $8,815 paid from maintenance reserve. And we did discuss these in a little bit more detail at the um, committee meeting. Um, very important that we keep these boilers well maintained and do repairs as needed and when needed because they sure cost a lot of money when you have to replace them. So uh, I'm very confident that uh, our maintenance department is doing a, a good job on um, keeping all the boilers running at all the schools. Thank you, Mr. Cass. Any questions or comments from the board? Okay. Uh, the next section of the agenda is for good, the good of the cause. Committee reports, correspondence, discussion items, and other items germane to the district. Do we have some meeting highlights that we want to uh, communicate, Dr. Forte? So far, I have it. it was a smooth opening of the school year and back to school nights. Does anybody have anything else to add? Um, if I can, oh, uh, sorry, I was going to just uh, go to the cause. Um, this weekend is the sustainability fair at the farmer's market. I encourage everyone to attend if they can. Um, there are a lot of different groups who will be there. And as uh, members of the community, we should, you know, go to support and, and you know, speak to as many people as we can because composting is important. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Dr. Forte, I have nothing else that I would, uh, that I can think of for the highlights as well. Any other board members? I'll just, I'll just add the, uh, that we're going to do the goals on the 23rd as well. I, I had a comment. Okay, Mr. Kass. Reluctantly, because I know we'd like to get out of here by 8.15, <laughs> break, break our record. Uh, anyhow, I was looking over the agenda and noticed that we're going to have the presentation on the, uh, the goals, which is a great thing. At, uh, maintains our transparency with the uh, with the public and everything. But I noticed on the board goes the uh, community out, outreach and uh, the word improve. And I know uh, many of us, uh, some more than others, are very actively involved in other organizations in town and um, participate in other volunteer activities, maybe not on a full-time basis, but a part-time here and there. So I think and I was talking to Dino on the way in. Uh, Denver is certainly it's just a great community for volunteers uh, and volunteer organizations. I went to a uh, community fair a couple of years ago. They had it, and they had all these Denver organizations, some of them I never heard of, and what they do. So um, it's a great part of our town. So maybe we should look at the word improve and uh, continue to participate uh, because – Back in my corporate days, you know, the dreaded thing on your performance summary was needs improvement. So it uh, perceptually, you know, it kind of is, it's, we could do more. And I don't know if some of us can do more at, the, at this point. We invest a lot of time. So something to think about. And, um, you know, and when you have improvement, there's, uh, there's benchmarks, there's a plan. And I don't know if we're, you know, really want to do that where we list everything we do. And then uh, at the end of the year, we're saying, well, nothing changed. <laughs> or maybe Mr. you did more. Mr. Cass, when you say uh, get more involved, are you talking about uh, specific, in a specific event or you want us to be more involved in the community? Like, uh, no, no, it's the word improve. It, there's a perception on my part when I read it, and uh, maybe I should have brought it up when we were putting that together, but when you see the word improve, it indicates that you should improve. And I, I don't think that's the case. Um, you know, Mike, I'm you know, closest with on the board here, and he was Rotary Man of the Year. I mean, uh, I don't know when Mike sleeps. He's got so many uh, organizations he's involved with. And the rest of you, too, do a lot, you know, just do a lot of things. So, uh, you know, maybe it's to, to continue. And, and also from a communication standpoint, we talked about, you know, we had a big communication study there. Um, maybe we should be, at, you know, advertise and publicizing some of the uh, work that the board members do uh, outside of the Board of Education. Um, you know, maybe you highlight one person uh, a month or just, uh, you know, do everybody with a couple of sentences or what else they're involved in, because I know all of us spend a lot of time doing things for the town. Just a shameless plug. Um, I'm, I'm also a Rotarian as well. Um, and 
I would love to do one of those uh, community vendor events again. That's what I was a uh, part of. I don't know. Was was it Pride? And it was. I think it was just the town hall also. But we should, as the Board of Education, be involved as well because the school district is a huge part of the community. So next time, and if I put that together, I'm going to let you guys know, <laughs> and then we can uh, all get involved in that way. And also a second shameless plug, um, the farmer's market on uh, Sunday on the 15th has a sustainability fair where all the other um, community groups will be at, um, and the Denville uh, Rotary will also be there selling ducks. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cass. Thank you, Ms. Haytelis. Uh, Mr. Capello, did you have something else you wanted to add? Uh, for the good of class, yes. Yeah, one thing, and it's it's kind of um, a little off topic, but maybe not totally. Um, we've been talking about free lunch, uh, the free lunch program, the national free lunch program, and obviously we're involved in it now, and we make you you know huge efforts to feed the kids uh, you know Denville that uh, might be food insecure. I just saw something uh, last night on uh, it was last week tonight. Uh, if you have HBO, you could see John Oliver. He does these fairly like twenty minute long deep dives into an issue, and he focused on school lunches. And one of the things that there are actually, you know, there's talk about, which I don't think anything's going to happen this year, of course, but uh, the idea of bringing back the national school lunch program the way it was during the pandemic, where basically universal free lunches. Um, you know, it's it would be amazing. It would basically mean kids are not falling through the cracks. It, it means districts like us, basically, everybody would get a free, every student that wanted one could get breakfast and lunch free. So it's something that they're talking about. I think it would be tremendous. Um, so just wanted to bring that up. If you get a chance, watch the program. It was really, really informative. So. Great. Thank you, Mr. Capella. Mr. Kim, if I, will, if I can, um, just two quick things. Denville Education Foundation has two events coming up. This Friday is their uh, free outdoor movie night. The weather looks like it's going to be good. So it's on Gardner Field number one. Um, they are selling, I think, pizzas ahead of time. They'll have a concession stand open, so I encourage everybody. I'll send out the uh, information in case you're interested. And then their other event is during the school board convention, so I know some of us won't be able to make it, but they're having their golf outing, uh, dinner, and, and uh, tricky tray and auction, which is uh, October 22nd. It's a Tuesday evening at Knoll Country Club, so I'll send that information out also if anybody's interested or able to attend. I know they would appreciate it. They do a lot for the uh, district. Um, the other thing I wanted to quickly bring up was, um, it was interesting as Dr. Forte was going through some of the, uh, demographic stuff. I, I started looking at some, you know, emails and trying to remember back. And it's, um, it's really interesting to look at some of the yields from some of the high density existing home units. So uh, I'll give you an example, Estling village, right? They're all one and two bedroom. It's about a hundred units in there that was built in 2015. And our yield in 2019 was about 8%, right? It was eight kids, eight students that we had coming out. As of today, we have 15 students coming out of that, that development. So 10 years after it was built. So I don't know whether it's the length of the building, meaning 10 years, like, or is it just the economy or something that changed from 2015 to 2024 that increased our yield tremendously? Um, but then also if you look at the forges, it's an unbelievable yield, right? I think those are the two, uh, uh, units or two developments in town that are currently built that probably represent the demographics we're going to see coming out of the existing or the newer, uh, developments that are being built now. So I guess I say this because I still think that Dr. Grip's projections are probably low yield considering what we could see coming out of some of these developments. Um, whether it takes 10 years like Estling Village did or whether it's going to be instantaneous is really the question I think we've got to look at. So I appreciate Dr. Forte and the administration really keeping a close eye on this because this is one of these things where I think it could, you know, start swelling pretty quickly and start getting to the point of uh, stretching out some of our classrooms and everything. Probably not to the immediate point that we need more space but certainly to the point that our class sizes and, um, and, and uh, ratios of uh, staff to students could get greater, which also brings up a second point I was going to make, which is just something I wanted to look at was um, just historical look at amount of students with 504s and IEPs, like literally going back like as far as we can find it. 
Um, because as I sit at home, my wife's an educator in another district, the amount of students she has every year continues to go up and up and up and the demand on the staff. And then we talk about at the staff convocation burnout and you think, why do they have such burnout from a staff perspective? Well, part of it is the demand that these teachers and educators, the, um, as well as the, uh, the aides have on trying to accommodate and modify so many different students, um, needs. So, um, I think about those two together cause it's, potentially a recipe for disaster as we have larger class sizes and more demand on our staff. So um, thanks, Dr. Forte and the administration for bringing in uh, a wonderful keynote speaker at the staff convocation and for using that as a program throughout the district, not just at the convocation, but throughout the year. I think it's an important thing we need to keep on our radar as a board. Um, no action yet, but I would say it's certain something that I think is important as I kind of think through kind of our future. Thank you, Mike, appreciate that. Any follow-up questions or comments? Or... Yeah, I wanted to, um, uh, one of the first things I wanted to say is Dr. Forte, I thought that convocation as Mike alluded to was a fantastic event, another successful outing. So thank you, thank you, Dr. Collis. Thank you, uh, Ms. Growski, and thank you for the, uh, the rest of the staff for putting that together. Um, having all the board members there, I wanted to thank uh, each and every one of you as well for uh, supporting. Uh, we are definitely a district that uh, that we are proud of, or we are part of a, uh, something that I think is a, a great community and great district. So um, I also want to be, um, um, make a few comments about the uh, tragic events that happened earlier this week. You know, I think that uh, it, it's another, um, another sad uh, news uh, event that happened and uh, unfortunately it's almost like it's um, um, status quo which we shouldn't feel comfortable about or you know so um, I am grateful for all the programs that we have in place uh, for mental health as well as the security measures that we put in place I think um, both of those specifically mental health is a huge component of that uh, from some of the news articles that I'm reading, that was part of the reason why uh, these tragic events might have happened. So, uh, I, I, you know, I think we as a board continue to support that, and uh, I'm grateful that we have this in place. So, um, moving forward, we should always look to strive to improve whatever we can from security standpoint, as well as from an emotional and a mental health standpoint. So, uh, like. I look forward to the further discussions that we have um, with any new or new ideas that might be out there uh, that we want to try to incorporate. So, okay, great. Um, if there are no other comments or questions, uh, comments for good of the cause, uh, we'll open it up back up for public discussion at eight thirteen p.m. Seeing uh, no one come up to the podium or the mic, or seeing that no one's online, we will close open public comments at 8.13 p.m. There is a need for an executive session, uh, which we will go into, and then we will not be voting anything um, after that, so we'll uh, adjourn immediately after. So, uh, Dr. Moore, can you take us into executive session, please? Sure. I'd like to move that we convene an executive session in accordance with Section 8 of the Open Public Meetings Act. The purpose of this closed session will be to discuss negotiations, legal, security, and personnel issues. Minutes of this session will be made available to the public when the need for confidentiality no longer exists. I'll second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any nays or abstentions? Okay, we are in executive at 8.14 p.m.